Well, just a week after President Trump slammed his intelligence chief as passive and naive, senior intel officials are speaking out against the president's attitude toward American security. The president took to Twitter a day after making the comment, saying that the Senate hearing had been, quote, mischaracterized by the media. But according to a Time report, officials close to the president have described tension and Mr. President's, Mr. Trump's lack of interest during intelligence meetings and briefings. John Walcott joins us from Washington. He's a contributor for Time and also an adjunct associate professor at Georgetown University's School of Foreign Service. Thank you so much, John, for joining us. You know, in your article, you write that President Trump's displays displays willful ignorance during his intel meetings. What do you mean? Uh, well, that's actually, uh, Rena, the description that a uh, senior intelligence official uh, applied. Uh -huh. And I think what he means by it is pretty straightforward, that the president came into office without much experience in foreign affairs, really with none, and has shown no, no interest in learning more. You know, why do you think it is? Intelligence officials are really silent. There's a lot of things that go down that, uh, down that they might not agree with, with presidents. Why do you think now that these intel officials are choosing to break their silence? Good question. I think what, first of all, the president got off of the wrong foot with the intelligence community almost from the day he took office. He went out to CIA headquarters. Uh, in the lobby there, there is a wall of stars that commemorates intelligence officers who've been killed in the line of duty. And he stood in front of that wall of stars and talked about himself. And that was probably not the right way to get started building a relationship with the intelligence community. And it's been a fraught relationship all along. Uh, one pretty stark example, it's public, is uh, when he took the word of Russian President Vladimir Putin over the conclusion of his own intelligence agencies that the Russians had meddled in the 2016 election. But I think uh, the dam started to crack in December when uh, former Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, in an interview with your Bob Schieffer, talked about the president's inability to pay attention, the fact that he didn't like to read. And it finally broke wide open in the uh, session you described, in which he criticized the intelligence officers for being naive and suggested they needed to go back to school, to which one official replied to me, he ought to go to school. You know, John, it's not uncommon. You know, presidents digest this brief differently from administration to administration. George W. Bush, for instance, was also criticized for not uh, necessarily wanting as in, in deep, detailed intel every day in these presidential briefs. How do you, I guess, look into the fact that some presidents consume that intelligence briefing differently, and how does he choose to get it? Well, you're right. They all do consume it differently. President Obama, for example, uh, would take enormous briefing books home at night, upstairs, actually, in the yeah. White House, and read them overnight, hundreds of pages. Uh, President Bush got a regular morning briefing from his intelligence officers. He got additional briefings when an issue was current. Uh, and President Trump, as we know from, from his uh, leaked schedule, had 17 briefings in 85 days. Mm -hmm. uh, those briefings often are taken by the National Security Advisor, John Bolton, and some occasions by the Vice President, Mike Pence. How does so the... I'm sorry, John, go ahead. No, he simply doesn't want to take those briefings. Yeah. How does this go forward, then, if the relationship between the President and the intelligence community is this divided, and there, there's a little bit of a strain, I guess you would say, does it pose a threat to our national security at this point? It can. Uh, if a president acts on impulse rather than information, which is how another official put it, there is a danger of making mistakes. And uh, one example that, that folks uh, in the intelligence services mention is the summit with Kim Jong-un in Singapore, where the president walked away heralding a great accomplishment which really is, is very empty and has produced no real steps toward denuclearization in North Korea at all. And now there are worries about what might emerge from a second summit mm -hmm. with Mr. Kim. Mm -hmm. Were you troubled at the fact that the president had a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin with no one else in the room? 
That's another cause of concern uh, among intelligence officials. There's no record of that. And honestly, some of the records that uh, the U.S. government has came from the Russian side. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is another problem that started. He, he had a meeting, the president had a meeting uh, in New York with Japanese Prime Minister Abe, and the only interpreter present was the Japanese interpreter. Mm -hmm. There was no American present for that either. John Walcott, we're so grateful you could join us to break down intelligence matters. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks.